You will not believe the business opportunities in a not so desirable community or neighborhood. In this video, I'm going to be giving you the spiritual discipline that you need to open your small business in an undesirable neighborhood or community. Everyone here that talks about starting a small business seems to make it into a rudimentary, step-by-step, -step, hit or miss kind of thing. They make starting your small business into a job with limited or finite possibilities. Spiritual discipline is not about what you believe in or who you believe in, but it's more about how to believe and how strong you believe. Spiritual discipline is not job oriented, but mission oriented. And there's a big difference between a job and a mission. Now, a job has a quitting time, but a mission will not allow you to quit. With spiritual discipline, the possibilities are infinite and limitless because it all depends on the dreamer. Spiritual discipline includes your dream, faith, courage, the required steps for starting a small business, negotiating adversity, gaining wisdom, and maintaining the spirit to keep dreaming. Now, bad neighborhoods come in all shapes, sizes, and colors. I welcome everyone here with open arms, but I also welcome your helpful insights. I bet somebody's asking right now, what are your qualifications for a small business? Well, as far back as I can remember, I was raised in a small business in a predominantly black city. I was raised off of black dollars. Now, how many people can say that? I have a degree in business finance. I was an officer in the military. Currently, I'm a 25-year small business owner. I'm an American patriot that loves this country and loves the opportunities that it presents. And most importantly, I'm a proud father of two. The first thing that we're going to talk about is your dream. The dream of business ownership in the hood is everything. And without a dream, you have nothing. Make sure that you listen to me now because the listening creates the faith. And without faith, this dream will not materialize. Faith is the belief in something that has not yet materialized or happened yet. You have to believe this dream into existence. This is the most writing that I'm going to ask you to do. Take your dream and write it down on paper. Now, when you write this dream down on paper, make sure that you're precise and concise with what you want. For example, through your business one day, you might want to live in a gated community. If you're not concise in your dream, you can end up selling top rubbing in prison and your dreams of being in business and living in a gated community will have been fulfilled. You see, it's simple. When you can't concisely define your dreams, you get what's left over from the people that know what they want. So let me give you an example of how we think in the hood. If I ask you, hey, how do you feel today? Now, if you feel good, your answer is going to simply be, hey, man, you know, I feel really good today. How about you? But if I ask you how you feel today and you feel bad, you go all into the description. Man, I woke up this morning, my back was hurting, my ankle was hurting, my teeth was hurting, my leg was hurting, I looked in the mirror, I think I cried. Woo, I feel bad today. We have been socialized, especially in the hood area, to stress and emphasize the negative. Simply because most people don't want to hear about your good news, they don't want to hear about your bad news. And they will listen to you with undivided attention. We major in a lot of minor things and we place complete emphasis on a lot of negative things that only tear us down. So with this dream, I want to make sure that you talk about even the small things that matter, like the lighting, the bathroom cleaning schedule, your greeting smile, what are you going to do when you get your first customer, your uniform, your elevator pitch? How are you going to maximize the good in a quote unquote bad area? And then I want you to highlight your attitude and your business spirit that you were displaying through your business. Business success in the hood 
is mostly attitude. After you get through writing your dream, I want you to take that written dream, put it in an envelope, seal the envelope, and write thank you on the outside of that envelope. You put thank you on it because you're claiming it here. Whether you believe in the universe, I believe in God, and whoever you believe in, just make sure it's in the subliminal here. Now you take that envelope, and you place it where you keep your variables at, and you just leave it there. You're not gonna go back and open it because you already know it and you've already claimed it. Now this is what happens. Right away, you start to act like and talk like the business person that you committed to become. Then you start to see manifestations of your dream. Wow, that's the same storefront window I'm gonna have. Wow, that's the same color combination that I want. Wow, that's the exact uniform that we're gonna have. And when you see these things, simply say, thank you. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna write a business plan. Not just any business plan, we're gonna write a lean business plan. A lean business plan focuses on summarizing the most important points of the key elements of your plan. They can take as little as one hour to make and they are typically one page long. So with a lean business plan, it means that we don't have time for a lot of things that are gonna stifle us, frighten us, and hold us back. Now sometimes when you're making your lean business plan, you might need some help. Now I had a cousin call me from the south side of Chicago and he was really worried about the business that he was considering starting. I said, hey man, are you worried about the fact that you only have a 10% chance of being successful in your business? He said, no, not at all. He said, I'm worried about the 90% chance of me getting shot at my little business with a 10% chance of success. So we brainstormed and came up with three things that would help the security of his business. First, we talked about the lighting, bright lights. Bright lights are a great deterrent. Then we talked about being a great service to his community. And when you're a good service to your community, a lot of times the community protects you. And because he was talking about opening up a small service station, gas station, we talked about going no cash, card only. And I think that protects the business life and his life too. Next, we're gonna talk about funding your business. Up until COVID, I had heard a lot about small business loans all my life, but I had never known anyone to get one. But things have really changed and uh, if you're set up right, your credit's right and you're right, uh, the presentation's right, you can obtain a small business loan to determine how much money do you need to get your business going. You have to get the ball rolling because you have to start making money before you run out of money. Is the money from your business going to come from your savings, your inheritance, your credit cards? Are you going to sell some of your possessions? Do you have a 401k? Are you going to borrow the money from a family member or friend? Now, if you're fortunate enough to own a home, you can take out a line of credit and really get this thing rolling. Now look, don't y'all be messing around talking about reparations money. That seems like a pipe dream right now. You guys know good and well, for only a small percentage of us, it will be reparations. But for the rest of us, it will be detonation. Because we're going to get that little money and self-destruct. Next, we're going to talk about the location. Now in black neighborhoods, there's always prime locations that are very negotiable. People in the community are dying for you to pick one and open it up. I know a guy that took a job because he wanted extra money to open up a business on the other side of town. But he also claimed that he took that job for the benefits. So the dude took this job and hated the job so much that the job ended up killing him. Now tell me, what's the benefit in that? From there, we're gonna choose our business structure. The legal structure that you choose for your business will impact your business registration requirements. Don't let somebody dupe you into paying a lot of money for this. Go to your state's Secretary of State website and fill out the paperwork and it only costs you pennies compared to what somebody else would charge you to set up your business structure for you. Next, we're going to choose a business name. Choose a business name which represents what you're doing and it represents your spirit. 
Okay, next we're gonna register our business. If your state requires it, register your business with the state and the local agencies. Then we're gonna get our federal and state tax IDs. From there, go down to City Hall and get your business licenses and permits. Trust me, they can't wait for you to come in there and enhance the city. From there, we're gonna go down to the bank and open our business account and then we're going to open up shop. Let me share with you 20 secrets to small business success. These 20 secrets will increase your chances of business success by 35%. I have lived this all of my life and you have to believe. Embrace the business community in which you open your business in. Give your customer base more than what they pay for. Remember, you reap what you sow. Don't look at what you're getting, look at what you're becoming. Work your small business twice as hard as you would your marriage. Be willing to go down with the ship. Fight, fight, fight. Work hard to secure the black woman's business. Own the fact that you own a small business. Never trivialize it. Trust that most people are good. During these hard times, everything is negotiable. Be competitive. Don't let anybody walk out of your business without asking for the business. No matter what, always put yourself in the customer's shoes. Wear your business uniform with pride. The shirt and tie thing is overrated in business. If you're having a problem deciding on what you wanna do in business, do something that no one else is willing to do. If you don't particularly love what you do in your business, make sure that you love what it does for your customers. Never wish that things were easier. Always wish that you were better. Discipline your disappointment. Never let rainy days make you quit. Use them to regroup and keep fighting. Don't worry about negative people. Most people are rooting for you. Share your victories with your family to inspire the next generation. Let your clean and professional business set the high standards in the community. And lastly, stay humble and prayed up.